So thanks, Dan, because uh, you've been able to introduce some concept I'm going to reuse in this demo. So um, first, uh, let me show what the demo is doing, and uh, you can also have access to the code on, on GitHub, I would share the link. So the idea there, I wanted to build uh, my custom copilot using the Teams AI library. So the Teams AI library is really a new way to build a bot-based you know, application in Teams and use Azure OpenAI or OpenAI to help you to do some tasks. It could be a smart bot, but it could be also something to help you generating code. So it would be in the continuity with what we have seen with Dan. I'm not going to generate a SQL, even if I would need some help to generate SQL. To be honest, I've always been super bad in SQL. But I'm going to generate code that's going to uh, create dynamic 3D worlds uh, inside Teams. So I am inside the Teams meeting. I loaded my uh, Jarvib, so it's a reference to Jarvis. Um, you know, Jarvis means something specific. I don't know if you know what Jarvis means, but I decided to change the last letter. And I'm going to share uh, to the meeting stage um, this 3D canvas. So the 3D canvas um, is using Babylon JS, a 3D engine I've been creating. I already did some demonstration if you're following me using this uh, engine. And now I can ask to my bot, you know, Jarvib, which is there, uh, some specific actions. So for instance, let's ask Jarvib to, let's imagine I would like to create 10 cubes of different colors uh, and put them on a circle. So I'm going to ask Jarvib to create 10 cubes of uh, different colors, like on a circle, for instance. I hope my bot is still running fine. You see that he's going to contact my uh, my bot, and boom, I managed to have now 10 cubes of different colors um, uh, put like on a circle. You can even check the code there uh, that is being generated. So it's Babylon JS code, and I'm taking the JavaScript code, and I'm going to evaluate that in a dynamic way. I'm going to show you the magic behind that. Um, the real magic is really AI, of course, meaning that uh, I can continue. For instance, I would like to ask uh, Jarvib, can you please I don't have to say please, which is great. I don't, I'm not sure it's a good idea to be rude to AI. Maybe one day we will pay that. <laughs> but can you please animate the rotation of uh, cube five and nine? So let's see what's going to happen. And you can now see that uh, this cube and this cube that are currently cube five and nine are now uh, rotating, are now animated, uh, which means that the AI managed to also understand the, the, you know, which object I'm talking about. We can even do something very fun. We can chain like uh, some ass, like um, uh, make cube for transparent um, two times bigger and move it up by, um, I don't know, two units. It's not always working perfectly well, but like uh, so far I've been lucky. So what is going to be cube for? You see it worked. So he managed to do like to change all the action and he showed me the code. Um, I've got other possibility. I can uh, have a list of models. So you know in PowerPoint you can load 3D models, you can insert 3D models. So I'm using the same API. So I'm going to ask to find available uh, models for a house, so 3D models. So this time it's going to do something different, like uh, it's going to understand like my intent is to uh, have a list of models. So it's going to transform my prompt into a specific call to another part of my code. Uh, it should then call the API of, um, of, you know, of PowerPoint in a way, and then generate back uh, uh, an adaptive card list to show me the list of picture in a way like of the 3D, 3D model available. So you see now I have, I've got a list of available model and I've got their name. But what's fun, like this is something, you know, I did a demo with my girlfriend. And when I was trying this demo with my girlfriend, my girlfriend told me like, oh, can you please load the scary one? And you can see that scary is not one of the keyword. Uh, but as a human, you may have guessed that the scary one is, is the hunted house. So let's see if it managed to be as smart as a human. Um, it's load the scary one. 
And boom, he managed to understand that the scary one is the untin, untin one. So it means that uh, he's still aware of the context. So this is working really well thanks to many different texts. So I'm going to show that now uh, in the code. Um, so first, I'm using the Teams AI library at, for that, um, which means that the Teams AI library is doing part of the job that Dan just shown you before. I just need to provide my Azure OpenAI key or uh, OpenAI key. So you see that in my code, I'm covering both cases. If you're providing an Azure OpenAI key, I'm going to create the uh, Teams AI uh, object required to, to do the job. Or otherwise, I will use your OpenAI key. I'm using GPT-5. GPT 3.5 Turbo in both cases uh, to do most of the job. And then I've got what we name um, action. So you see that I've got action there. There is three types of action that we've seen in this demo. Code to execute for the beginning of it, meaning like create 10 cubes. You manage to map this intent, this prompt to this part of the code. And then what I was doing, I was just doing some basic checks and I was emitting uh, the code generated over WebSocket. So what's the way it's working there? I've got the bot running on the right. I've got a tab app, so which is a web app, that's going to listen to some WebSocket input. And the bot is going to send some WebSocket information to the web page to share the code to execute. So this is how it works. So this is what here the, bot, the bot is doing. It's going to take the code generating by the AI from your prompt push that to the web page, and then I've got in the web page some way to execute live the code. Uh, for available model, this is a bit more uh, elaborated in a way. Uh, I'm going to understand which, which is the right keyword to search for. Then I'm going to do a fetch request to the uh, PowerPoint API. And then I'm going to do a bit of parsing, like boring parsing as usual. And at the end, what I'm going to do is to change that with, can you please display the list of models? And we're going to see how it works. Finally, we have load this model, which is uh, pretty simple because uh, load this model is just going to take the name of the model that is currently being displayed in the list um, and then do, a, do a, a simple load query, like it's simple Babylon GS code to load the, the object in the current 3D scenes. So the way it works, you need to configure the system prompt. So Dan just showed that, showed, showed that uh, before. The system prompt is a way to configure the AI uh, in, in, under a certain scope. So uh, in my case, I've configured with my system prompt the AI to pretend it's an expert in Babylon JS. Fortunately for us, there is a lot of GitHub repo using Babylon JS. So what GPT has been doing is crawling a lot of uh, GitHub repo with some Babylon JS code and is now good enough to, um, to generate a Babylon JS code based on uh, LLM. So it's going to behave like a JavaScript uh, and Babylon JS expert. And I'm going to say like you have mainly free action to do, like you can load a new model, uh, you can generate some code or you find, find available 3D models. Then this is a way to tell him like, you will have free action that you have to call in, in my code that we've just seen in the TypeScript code. So this is what the Teams AI library is going to, to do for you. It's going to take the JSON output by the AI, map that to those free action and call your code. And then the more you're going to help the AI with context, the better it's going to be. So to help the AI to be even more uh, um, accurate in a way, I'm going to provide the current um, model available that I just display my adaptive card list. I'm going to also send back to the AI. This is the current list the user can see in the chat in a way. Current model loaded. Let's imagine I want to modify something on like as to the AI after I've loaded the house. Can, make, can you make it bigger, um, you know, smaller? Can you move it? It will understand which model I'm talking about. And I'm also sending back the full code being generated so far uh, to be able to uh, uh, to help the AI to understand what it should do. And Dan was sharing that. I'm doing the same. And I'm going to remind to the AI, because something he tends, some instance to forget about what I would like to do, uh, please only try to generate those actions. Because sometime, um, this is a recent update I did to my code, sometime the AI could hallucinate. I don't know if you heard about this specific word, like AI could uh, generate in a way something that is not going in the right direction. So you should really try 
to you know force it to think like you would like it to think uh, for your own needs so this is a way to reinforce the direction uh, like that this specific json format is uh, the one from the team's ai library i'm using meaning that everything of course is going to be json and and parsed by the team's ai library that then is going to uh, call my code uh, on this various action for the list models um, this is uh, the adaptive card that I'm going to provide to the AI. So the AI can also understand adaptive card. So I'm going to, to tell to the AI, this is roughly the base uh, JSON for a schema I would like to use. And you see that I've got like a placeholder there with URL and item. And then what I'm going to ask to the AI, this is, this is the image list, which is the list of URL I would like to display. Uh, this is also the complete list. Please, can you fill the, uh, this is la where I'm telling the AI to do that. Can you fill the placeholder with real data? And that is going to generate the adaptive card that I'm going to display in, in Teams. So the last part is uh, I wanted to do something also for uh, accessibility. So you can imagine that someone is collaborating with me in this meeting and maybe is uh, visually impaired or maybe completely blind. Uh, and this is an issue, of course, when you're doing metaverses like that or 3D worlds, like uh, it's highly visual. So let's imagine I would like to ask to the AI to help me. I've got the command which is like slash describe. And let's see what it's going to do. Hope it still works. Oh, I forget to ask the bot to do the, the command. This is a common mistake I'm doing. And now the bot, you see, going to save, uh, and it could also use, you know, a voice for that. This code creates 10 cube of a circle with a radius of 10. Each cube is given a random color and blah, blah, blah. As cube four is scale up, moved by two units. Um, and the 3D model of a hunted house is important and scale three times uh, to its original size. So it's managed to understand like, what's going uh, was displayed. And to do that, I've used a slightly different uh, model this time. You see that in the config JSON, this is something you can also fight tune in Teams AI. You can use the classical, you know, um, uh, properties of uh, Azure OpenAI or OpenAI, like temperature, like you should have a look to the documentation to understand what it does, but you can change also the model. So in my case, I decided to change the model and to use text DaVinci in my case. And this is uh, what the prompt did. So most of the time, what's fun when you're playing with AI, you're spending some time, more time designing your prompts, <laughs> writing your code now. Uh, and this is like a simple prompt and manage, I managed to build. So if you like to play with it, um, there is, this is available on my GitHub. So you will have a readme to follow uh, how to set up it and play with it. Uh, and you simply have to go on uh, this specific uh, URL, github slash davrous, which is my uh, Microsoft alias and Jarvib. Um, and you will have the code and Jarvib stands for just a rather very intelligent bot. So if you know uh, Iron Mine, uh, you knew about Jarvis, now you know about Jarvib. And this is everything I wanted to show you. Thanks a lot. Back to you. Thank you.